Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, so since the last time I spoke to you, nothing has changed. I've had a bit of a clean up, um, just to get rid of some dust and sort a bit of the shelving out. Uh, other than that, I haven't actually touched the bike. So I'm gonna crack on with this. Uh, what I wanna try and get done is I wanna do something with um, these side panels. As I said in the last episode, I've got this um, bit of plastic epoxied on now. Um, what we need to do is cut it to the right length, depth, I don't know. Um, put a bit of filler on top just to sort of get the, the look I'm going for um, and the profile. Because um, it's, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, but the, the finish on this is like really coarse. I'm not too sure what happened to it. Um, it's almost got like a... Um, like a leather grain on it. It's, it's really weird. I'll, I'll take a picture and put it on the screen. I'll sort that out. Um, maybe put a bit of paint on it to see what it will look like. Um, just try and get these neatened up. Um, and also, the air filter. So, for the initial kind of getting this running, as I said, I'll be using the original uh, ECU. So that means using the um, the plenum chamber, the um, airflow meter, uh, and a pod filter of some description on the other side. But as I said, the pod filter is going to stick out past the rest of the bike. It's going to be the furthest point over, which is just going to look a bit crap. So I'm going to try and find a way of sinking it all back in a little bit further, um, so it's a little bit more flush. Um, so yeah, uh, there's been a few more, uh, subscribers, so thank you guys, I do appreciate it. Um, still, there's like a few of you not subscribing, so, uh, you know, click the button, it's down here somewhere. Um, let's crack on, uh, and see what we can do with these. Alright guys, so this is what I'm working with. Um, what I'm going to try and do... To try and get this line in the radiator and use a paint pen and just score the inside of it, just mark the inside of it, so I can give myself kind of a rough guide um, as to where the cut needs to be. From that point then I can, I'll probably cut it a little bit, I won't cut enough off so that I can then just trim down and you know get it all lined up by eye. One thing I am noticing on this is this top part here where I've moved the tank back slightly, the top part here is actually just touching the front of the tank. Um, I'm not too sure why it's doing that, because um, this isn't bolted on anywhere else, but it's just a little bit. So I'm just gonna take the edge off of that. Um, but also here you can see the issue with the air filter. So this is the air filter housing. Once you put a pod filter on this, you're talking probably, what's that? That's maybe five, it's at least four inches out from the bike. So I do have the original kind of snorkel thing that's supposed to go on the radiator there that then feeds down into the inbox. Hopefully this isn't shot, um, but this is the bottom part of this that's been turned upside down and then the bottom's just been trimmed off just to allow air to go in but it's not going to really catch any air um, so my idea is if I can put this back in probably four inches um, I think that's only just about possible we'll have a look in a minute but then I can use the snorkel to actually guide air towards um, the air filter what I'll probably do then is try and make some sort of cow to go around this part so that air from the radiator that's passing through the radiator doesn't heat this up too much. It's it's going to get hot. It's the way the bike's designed. Everything sits behind there. So it was going to always get hot. I want to try and minimise that as much as possible. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to mark this out um, and see how it looks.
Well, it looks awful, I don't know how well that's coming out on camera, but it gives me a rough guide to cut to. So, I'll go up to the bench, trim that down a little bit, and uh, see how it looks. Right, so I've taken the, obviously taken the tank off and taken the electrics tray out, so we can kind of see what the issue is. So, the plenum chamber, it can't move. There is no movement on that whatsoever. You've then got a um, this rubber coupler. Um, I can't remember the size of this now. Um, I'll try and put the size on screen. You can buy them readily available off eBay. Um, it's like a, a 70 mil to a 60 mil or something like that. So this is probably the distance that we need to take off. So what I need to try and do is try and find something or find a way of actually moving the air filter to connect to the plenum without using the coupler or using a small coupler. I don't know. But the other problem is, is the fan motor is, it's, it's pretty much touching this. So I need to see if I can take this cap off. Do I need this cap? Um, maybe make a smaller cap, I don't know. Um, and give myself a little bit more room in there because obviously this is a little bit more bulky. Once it slides in, I'm gonna need more room in there. So yeah, I'm gonna take this apart and, and have a look. We'll put it on the bench and see what we can do. Right, so this is the assembly. Um, just had a look, quick look at that fan. The That cap can't go anywhere, it has to be there. Um, it can't be shortened at all, so that's the limitation with the room there. So I'm gonna have a look. I've I've been watching, um, I've, I've seen people put in uh, SPAL fans, SPAL, I don't know the correct term or how you say it, um, but they do like a, a slimline fan. Obviously, those fans are, are quite bulky because the technology wasn't there back in the 80s. Um, fan technology is a lot better now. Um, but those fans are known to be problematic anyway. So it would be a good idea to strip the fan away and have a decent fan. It's, it's one less issue, isn't it? So, at the moment, this, this gap here is the issue. Um which is three inches. So, can, obviously that doesn't fit in there. So, if I could get that in there, that obviously brings the filter in three inches closer. So, can I, Fit that in there, like that. Can I cut some reliefs in this, put this in here, then that goes on the inside. And then put a clamp on this, there was a clamp on this originally anyway clamp this down so that then that sits in flush then it you don't need this length you only need that much let's give it a go let's cut this up and see what this will give us
So, it looks like that is the most we're going to get out of it. Um, but that is a, a good enough fit on its own. As I say, I'll, um, I'll cut some little reliefs in this um, and put a clamp around that so that it is decent. So, that removes obviously that amount. Um, once this goes on, this will obviously be further into the um, into the bike now. So let's put this back on and we'll have a look. Right guys, I'm calling that a great success. Great success. So you can see now that is inside the bike. So hopefully, once we get an air filter on there, it's only going to protrude a slight amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, um, this duct in and see where that points to uh, and whereabouts I'm gonna uh, cut it off. Okay guys, so just trimmed that bit of tube to fit around that and that has worked out pretty well. Um, obviously this is still quite long. I can just remake this and make it slightly shorter. It's quite easy to do. Um, or I could actually have a cutout here to allow the air in. And then I just need to get a filter that actually has a um, a short lip on it. Um, and then we'll actually be getting more or less ram air, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to put the tank back on, see how it all lines up, and uh, carry on from there. So here it is with the tank back on. Um, and as you can see... That air filter is now well inside the line of the tank, so you're not you're not going to have it poking out, which is exactly what I wanted. So obviously, you, you're still gonna the, the line of that side panel is still going to come down here, so you're still going to see part of the air filter. But it will hide these pipes and bolts and the edge of this radiator and just tidy that all up. So once I've finished with that side panel, we'll put that on. And that should look pretty good. That is... There's the radiator. You can just about see the other side of it. So it's in line. I might chase it back a little bit further. Then on the top, I'm not too sure what to do because because that sticks out further than the radiator. So, but that's because obviously it's slightly recessed there. So I might I might try and take that round slightly, curve it back. Um, don't know. I don't know what to do about that yet. But um, I did have to take some material off the inside, just so it wouldn't hit uh, on all the bits and pieces behind it. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over it with the DA, get it all nice and smooth, put a little bit of filler around the edges, try and get those profiles a little bit tidier and see how it goes. I've gone over this 
as you can see it's a lot smoother now looks a bit better um, you can see here this is actually pretty much flush so I haven't really got to do much there but this is there's a step in there and that um, yeah see so it, it kind of comes down I want that to come straight out um, and then this bit from where I'd epoxied it in it had lifted up so what I'm going to do is I've got some of the uh, actually where is it some of this stuff so this is fiberglass reinforced so it's got little strands of fiberglass in it just allows you to build up more material quicker and stronger so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that profile so that's then flat all the way around there till about there-ish about there up about there um, fill it all the way around until this point but then I'll fill the inside of this to create a, a solid piece that comes out hopefully then that should be strong enough for me to take a mold of and then I'm either going to make this again in fiberglass or I'm going to try and do it in carbon fiber that's the ideal I don't know how well that will work because um, of course then I'll have to make some sort of bit for that to stick into but that that shouldn't be too hard he says um, because actually so if I take this out you can see in here there's an insert and wherever it's gone it's quite lucky actually so I managed to I managed to rescue one of the inserts because there was a, a, a bit down here um, I managed to rescue that out so I can actually use that again so yeah so I'm gonna put some filler on this and we will see where it ends up Right guys, that'll be that for today. Uh, as you can see that, I'm still gonna have to add some more onto that, but that profile is a little bit better there. Um, obviously there's a big lump on it on the inside there. Um, I'll try and sand all this smooth. Obviously I have to sand it all smooth. Um, I'm gonna have to add in some more around those edges um, just to tidy it up. But when you first start putting this stuff on, it kind of just wants to go all over the place and stick to whatever you're putting it on with. So you have to kind of build it up slowly. But it's kind of getting there. So yeah, um, I'll come back to this tomorrow. Um, when it's nice and hard, sand it all back down and put a bit more on and see where we're at. So it's the next day. Um, this is all gone off. It's all nice and hard. So I'm going to sand this all back now. Um, reface this bit um, and try and get this flatter um, I'm gonna have to add some more to the edges because um, I didn't put enough on because it wouldn't stick there it's all glooping around so um, I'll sand this all back and then we'll have a look at it when I'm done so that's all the sanding done I've um, just gone back over this with a um, sanding disc and a little die grinder and a flat pad um, just try and get the, the majority of it off you can obviously see these these dark spots where it hasn't been sanded it's not an issue we'll just build that back up um, with a little bit more filler uh, you can see that edge is kind of fallen off there um, but what I've also done is I've taken that across there you can also see there actually where I've broken through the filler, hit the plastic, and then hit the filler on the underneath as well. So that now is, if we can get that in shot, you can kind of see that edge is more or less there all the way around. So that's kind of a, a, a smoother transition. But I did this edge, I'll take it over to the bike in a minute and show you. 
um, because as that sits there, this is the, the furthest part out on the, the radiator, and then it kind of tapers back in. Um, so I thought, rather than just having this bit just jut out here, kind of have a sort of straight edge on it, more or less like the rest of it's got kind of angles on it. I think it kind of it matches in and doesn't look out of place. So, as I say, I'll take you over to the bike and you can have a look, see what this looks like on the bike. So here he's back on the bike. So, as I say, if you look down, get out of the light, um, it kind of matches in with this, this part of the radiator and it doesn't look too out of place with that, that length being there and that angle cut. Because that angle cut is nearly the same sort of line as the tank. Um, obviously this isn't as kind of, it's not mounted to anything at the moment um, where I've not made any mounts um, but that is kind of where it's going to sit so that kind of matches in with that when the forks come round nothing touches so that's good um, so yeah I'm going to put a little bit more uh, filler on this try and tidy it up and we'll see how that looks okay so that's another layer of um, fiberglass filler on there that just kind of brings that edge up nicely for a while I've been waiting for that to dry because this stuff's pretty good actually if you if you're doing anything like this if you can get this stuff where is it it dries in about 15 20 minutes and it is hard enough for you to actually go back over and sand within half an hour so it's really good for this so i'm gonna redo this um what i have been doing while this has been drying is i started on the other side um i say i started i cleaned up um some of the bits for the the way it was originally it had like a, a bracket here and another bit here so they're all gone they've just been cleaned up um and i've started on the bit of abs just to sort of so I can start gluing it in there. Unfortunately, the way I do this is um, with some. Let me just get it out. With some of this stuff. This is um, Gorilla Five Minute Epoxy. It's not five minutes. That's a fucking lie. Um, it's more like ten or fifteen minutes. Um, and so what you end up doing is sticking this stuff on here, and then kind of having to sort of like getting all these weird positions with your hands trying to sort of get everything to stay where you want it to so once I've sanded that one down I'll have a go at this get that one started um, so yeah let's, um, let's have a go at that right so that's all as much as I'm going to get on there you can see from the thickness there of what it started at um, until what it's got to now just to get that uh, that contour right but it's not a not a big deal as I say I'm going to cover this um, I'm either going to make a mould of it or cover it in carbon fibre um, at which point then I can decide on, on what I'm going to do but anyway I've got to get the shape right so you can still see there's there's low spots and this edge isn't quite perfect so what I'm going to do um, there's also a nick in that can you see that um, there's just a couple of rough bits on this so I'm just going to get the um, just standard body filler out now and just tidy up and clean up all the little edges um, and just make it look right I will come back to you in a second right so I'm going to be using this stuff um, it was off Amazon it was fairly cheap um, but it hardens quite quick says there uh, 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 within 15 minutes so hopefully I can get that on there get a bit of sanding done and that'll look quite good so that was a lot of work um, a lot of dust but this is now more or less there is a couple of pinholes in the filler 
like can you see just here um i say pinholes i'm not good at bodywork um that's not my um, best thing I'm, I'm good at um i don't know what my best thing i'm good at is but um i've got some fine um filler that um i'll just smooth into this there's a couple i can't see them there's a couple of marks like down here but the rest of it seems pretty smooth now so what i'll do is i'll go over this as i say with some like real fine filler um and then i'll get some 2k uh filler primer and go over this so i know it's completely flat and then block it out again um but that is essentially done um although i do need to have a look at how I'm going to mount it but that's what we need for now this should be so this is uh, obviously where this one started so the epoxy is finally no it's not it's still not set so this stuff has been on here for probably an hour now and it's still not set so when gorilla glue turn around and say five minute epoxy they're lying so that can stay there overnight um this i'll give this a wipe down we'll put this on the bike and we can see the finished ish article well, there it is on the bike. Looks pretty good. So as I said, all I've got to do now is try and work out the mountings for this. So whether I make another uh, pin that goes in something like this, but mount it, say, here. So there should be enough room for something like that to go in. Um, but my concern is then, obviously, if you're going down the road and it catches some wind, it's just going to pull out. So I need to ensure that it's not going to go anywhere. So I don't know. I might have to make another hole in the top of it and bolt it to something like there's a hole there. So I don't really want to be bolting stuff through. So I think it's going to look a bit ugly if you just see bolts hanging off of it but at the same time I don't really want it falling off um, I did think as well about making like a, a hook to go in here so that you'd have to kind of I don't know hook it on and push it down I, I, I don't know I haven't really got that far yet um, but then that would obviously be fixed enough so it wouldn't be able to pull out you'd have to kind of like pull it off and then I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to uh, have a think about that. But for the moment, I think that looks pretty good. So I did manage to pick up uh, an air filter the other day. Um, I got it off of Amazon. It was £8. Um, it, it, it's awful. But you don't stick out very far. It does stick out. Um, but not to the extent it was. And as you can see, this snorkel will feed it pretty well. Um, so say so this isn't one I'm gonna keep on the bike, it will just do for now. It stops stuff going into the um, airflow meter and it will allow me to sort of maybe give the bike a bit of a test run. Um, but I think that looks pretty good. Right guys, um, after putting the filler on that, sanding it down, uh, I've got a little low spot there, um, but I just wanted to show you this. So this corner has been broken off. Um, so what I'm going to do, taking a little bit of the um, ABS plastic, um, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to epoxy that on there, which should give me enough to build back this corner, um, just in this stuff. And what I'm thinking of doing is, because I'm going to put this into a mould, 
is I don't want it to sort of snap as I'm taking it out. Um, so I'm going to put a layer of fiberglass over the back of this just to give it a little bit more strength. I mean, it is, it's fairly strong. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't flex at all. But if you've ever seen anything taken out of a mould, it, it doesn't just fall out. It really has to be like wedged and popped out. So the stronger this is, the better. So I'm just going to repair this edge and hopefully that'll be good. Right, so lots of sanding later. We finally got most of this done. Again, I still need to go over with a little bit of filler. There's like bits like that. There was a hole there. I don't know, it was just an air bubble or something. Um, again, bits like that. Um, but also I need to sort of block out these ends because they're still really rough. But the profiles um, match. So, I'm try and get this on camera. So, as you go around, they're similar. I, I have no idea on how to get these exactly the same. So, the fact that they're close is, is good enough for me. And when you consider they'll be on either side of the tank, you're just going to struggle to see the difference. So, that's good enough for me, and it should be good enough for, for anyone looking at the bike. Um, you will notice on this one that I've gone over with some spot filler. Um, so like, you see like that there, it looks like there's dust on it. That's actually all the little holes that are in the, the filler there. So that's all been filled in. Um, this obviously, as I say, I've got some, uh, where is it? I've got some of this turn up the other day. This is um, 2K High Build Primer. So hopefully with a couple of coats of that and being blocked out again, it should be as smooth as I'm going to be able to get it. Um, it probably won't be perfect, but it'll be near as, um, and especially for me. So, um, yeah, call that a day. We'll call it a day there. Um, this video has been quite long, um, so you've probably skipped through most of this, because probably quite boring hearing me talk about sanding and filler and stuff um, hopefully you found some of this interesting though hopefully some of you can use uh, the information about pushing the airflow meter back into the bike um, for some of your projects uh, and using the snorkel cut down uh, to try and guide air in for a sort of cold air feed so next thing to do with these um, is make the, the brackets for these to actually clip onto or bolt onto. I'm not too sure yet. Um, I was thinking about using these lugs here to make um, some sort of like hook and then another hook on this side and they hook together. Um, only problem is I don't have these lugs on the other side. There's, it's just not there. So I can't do that. Um, I am thinking there is a couple of holes in the top of the radiator that I might make something to bolt onto on the radiator and then I can make something that will fasten there. So hopefully once that's got that there, it shouldn't be able to pull away too much. Um, only time will tell and hopefully I don't find out the hard way when I'm doing 70 mile an hour and the bloody side panels go missing um so that i'm gonna sort of go away and have a think about now and, and figure out uh, a mounting system and maybe cover that in the next video um i have all the discs this will be here shortly um obviously the headlight's now gone um that headlight was too big as far as i was concerned i was a seven inch headlight and it was just too big either way I'm, I'm looking into headlights. Once the discs arrive, um, I'll then have a look at doing the calipers. Um, what colour do you think I should paint them? I'm thinking like uh, a darker grey colour, like a silver grey. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, should they stay gold, black, silver? What do you think? And then once I've 
got the, the, the discs and calipers all together, I can do the, the lines. And I think this probably needs a rebuild. The master cylinder needs a rebuild. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this, please click the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, put something down in the comments. Um, I like talking to you guys. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.